Hey guys, and welcome back to Not So Pro Adult. Today in our podcast, we will be talking about World of Warcraft Legion. I'm again joined by my two very special guests. Very special. Super special. Super, super special. I'm Evie from Evie Does Stuff. And I'm Lunarus from Let's Play Lunarus. So yes, we're here to talk about World of Warcraft Legion. First of all, Lunarus, what is World of Warcraft Legion? Well, Rodol, I thought you'd never bloody ask. Um, World of Warcraft Legion is the sixth expansion pack for World of Warcraft. It was announced on the 6th of August 2015 at Gamescon. Um, it is due to be released on the 30th of August 2016, which is only two days away. Yay! Uh, yeah, I know. I'm really excited as well, personally. <laughs> um it tells us of the story of the Burning Legion invading Azeroth. It takes us to such places as um, the Broken Isles, uh, introduces us to new and old characters, and, well, let's put it this way, I'm very excited because it has a lot of ties back to the Burning Crusade. And we all know from the last podcast how much you love the Burning Crusade. Oh, I love it so much. It's like my second child. <laughs> yeah, I keep forgetting you've got a first. <laughs> oh, so, uh, before we carry on, guys, um, just to add in here, there may be spoilers. There will definitely be spoilers. Okay, there will be will big, most... humongous spoilers. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I cannot talk about this expansion pack already without spoiling things, because the pre-Legion stuff is just... It's beautiful. Oh, it's mind-blowing. <laughs> so, guys, if you don't want any spoilers, go somewhere else. Go go go! Play the game. Yeah. Read the the comics. Go read the Illidan book and then come back. And and then come back. But by then, probably Legion will be out. And you've been playing for about six weeks, so maybe not. <laughs> it's up to you. Quite a time sink. If you're bored, you know. If you're doing dailies, oh God, forbid dailies. Yeah, come back and listen to us when you do dailies. <laughs> so, um. Evie, you have probably done the most out of all of us for the pre-patch stuff. I have done so much of the pre-patch stuff. My bags are overflowing with nether shards. There we go. We'll, <laughs> let you, well, we'll let you lead into it then, shall we? Okay, so where should I start from? I start from... Um, I've forgotten oh. who the author is. It's really the, embarrassing. Do the quest line first. The quest line the quest is the line. most... Oh. The quest line's not where it starts. Ignore the book. <laughs> You've got a book that came just, out just beforehand. A, just to add in here, guys. If you really care that much what she's on about... Go buy the book, Illidan. Read the book. Tell us who it was by in the comments, because none of us know, and the I book's can't remember. somewhere. It's not Richard A. Knack, because I didn't hate it. <laughs> so, God knows who it is. But write in the comments for us and tell us how much of a noobs we are. Anyway, sorry, Evie. Evie. Yeah, that's what I was saying. The book isn't overly important, really. It just deep, goes deeper into the Demon Hunter storyline and about the training of the Demon Hunters. You do get that, I believe, in the Demon Hunter storyline at the beginning, so it's not technically as important. But it does just, it's nice, some nice background. Then you've got, there's uh, four comics uh, have been released. You can watch them either the most motion comic versions of them, or you can just get them on the Kindle. They're all free, which is brilliant. There oh, are, are those the uh, Harbinger comics? No, no, I forgot about the Harbinger stuff, thank you. Uh, Harbinger oh. is also, they are not quite motion comics because the, the Harbinger ones are voice acted, aren't they? Yes. You've got one about Gul'dan, one about Cadgar, which I loved. The Cadgar Harbinger the Cadgar is my favourite, really and the Illidan good. one, which I didn't like, because it didn't line up perfectly with the book. That did annoy me. And there's a character in the book, I'm waiting to see if he pops up in the game. I'll be very excited if he does. Um, and then you've got the four comics, which are separate. You do have, you can have those motion comics, but they're not voice acted. Um, it means you all your literates out there still have to read. You still have to read it, but they move, <laughs> so it's a bit more interesting. Um, and because I do want to speak at the end about one of the last of the four comics, you've got the is one about um, Magi uh, Magini, <laughs> the uh, the Bronzebeard King, um, Maggie. Thank you, who um, was in Cataclysm encased in crystal uh, about him waking up, which is I'll get into the pre patch quest lines. Then you've got. Um, Oh, one about the the night, not really night elves. I don't know what they're called, really. Um, the high elves, the Sindori. The, no, no, they're, they're, they seem to be like a, they're like night elves. They're from Suramar, but they have a night twelve. And other oh, the nightborn, there we go. Sorry, they're called the nightborn, no, no, no. and they're from Suramar, and they seem to be a third kind of elves. 
And then you've got the third one are about some Tauren and some weird looking guy. I, I didn't recognise them. And a hammer, which I think is going to be an artifact weapon possibly. That one's my least favourite, so I don't really, it wasn't good. And then the fourth one, which is my favourite, is about Anduin. And it's called Son of the Wolf. Um, so that's the one I'll be talking about later on. So then, obviously, we then go into the pre patch uh, actual quest lines. You have, I don't know where it started. Obviously, you logged in and you were told to go to the Broken Shores. Um, the Broken Isles, the Shore of the Broken Isles. The Broken Shore. Yeah, there. <laughs> um, and basically, as you if you've seen the Legion opening cinematic, you'll see oh. Varian and Savannah both go off to the Broken Isles. Um, and uh, the thing is, we've, we've gone to find them, basically. Vol'jin, Thrall, Gen Greymane, uh, to you name a few. You name every faction leader and um, race leader, and they're probably there. Well, to yeah. know, we didn't see for Valen. He was there. No, I didn't see him. He was anyway, there. Um, so yeah, and so we go then to find our relative, uh, relevant faction leader, depending which faction also, you're in. Also, I'd like to add in, this is a 40-man scenario, of which mm. 20 Alliance and 20 Horde. Now, which this is has lovely. never been done before. It's lovely. It's uh, Although what you do is extremely similar, down to the point where there's a bit where there's a bridge that gets made, if you do it across a bit, and Jaina makes an ice bridge, and Thrall makes an earth bridge, and they're exactly the same, just textured differently. <laughs> That's huh. how similar they are. So although you get different characters in it, it you don't miss out. They're very much similar. Uh, there's a couple of bits in the actual scenario itself where you do something slightly different, um, but you both get to fight the Legion, which is fun. Um, and obviously in that cinematic, and these are where the big spoilers start happening... There are we... three deaths, not two. Oh yeah, I mm. forgot! Tyrion! Tyrion Fordring! Uh, um, well, we suspect he's he dead. He looks very also... dead. <laughs> we also could suspect <laughs> That him. scream, he, I think he's quite dead. Nah. But yeah. we'll see. So yeah, Tyrion... The fact, the fact yes, that he kind of... You know, falls into a pit of what Green is it? Stuff. Molten fell, I can only assume. Yeah. yeah, and also he's got to give up Aspring. Yeah, we, we need we need later. to steal his weapon as well. So I guess that he has his eye for that, really. And then Vol'jin gets stabbed. Uh, mm-hmm. Throw throw is like on the floor, being like, oh, I can't go on. Um, well, he's, he's he's on the floor, but he doesn't. He looks fine apart from that. And then obviously, yeah, throw gets stabbed. Chris, uh, Redolt, sorry. And you mean Vol'jin? Every I just like to stop you there. I play now a troll. <laughs> and to see my war chief, who I'd wanted you were so for happy so, so long chief. to be killed, I was devastated so much so that I threw my headphones off and I went for a fag. <laughs> <laughs> He wasn't pleased. And then, so yeah, that happens. And then Savannah calls everyone away. Um, no, the Horde away, sorry. And the Alliance then believe that the Horde have abandoned them. Which, in a way, I suppose they have. Technically, not on purpose. No, oh, but they do. Rallying. And some stuff ensues. The Alliance trying to leave, but uh, Varian sacrifices himself to say so that everyone can get away. And he then goes pretty much not far off completely fighting against Gul'dan. But unfortunately, Gul'dan does kill him. He gets stabbed by one of the fell guards, and then Gul'dan. I, but I the... am no, no. I am sorry. I am going to cut in here. Yeah. <laughs> I have said from the very beginning, since I saw that cutscene, I don't think he's dead. We see an explosion, but we explode, don't see a body. Though. We don't see a body. No. I am going to go on record now. You're going to George in Foreman this... it. You're going to put your name on it. I'm going to put my name on it. In this podcast, I am going to say we are going to fight against a corrupted version of Varian at really some point during to. the expansion. Because although uh, I'm a Horde player, I'm mainly a Horde player. I've got to admit, for my friends, MS is a Horde player, so and I'm a Panda, so I'm really neutral anyway. But my first character was an Alliance character. I remember seeing Andrew when he was a little boy. I remember reading the Wolfheart story and the story when Varian was split. Um, and I absolutely, I was wrecked when we were at the very death. I think I was on Skype with a couple of, uh, a couple of our friends and I turned off my microphone because I was just sobbing loudly <laughs> as I had no. to have my microphone off. I believe you were there, Lunaris, for this as well. Yes. <laughs> I was, yeah, that was I just like, painful for I me. I just like to say, not before King Varian Wen comes out with one of the best lines I've ever heard. Oh my I've god, yeah, heard. when they say, um... Yeah. <laughs> You'll be remembered for nothing. He says, for, for, the, as, for, sorry, for the Alliance. Alliance. And I'm like, Chris, I need to go make an Alliance character right now. I, <laughs> yeah. As I say, I, I genuinely think that 
we are going to be fighting against a corrupted version of him. Oh, Purely because, let's face it, Blizzard in the past few years have a fantastic habit of bringing back dead characters. Mm. Oh, yeah. I yeah, mean, let's too. face it, uh, Wrath of the Lich King, um, what was his name? The uh, the guy that died at the gate and oh, then got Bob brought, Bob. And oh, then God, got brought back as the Lich King. Yep. Yeah. You know? Um, and one of the, was it the uh, Sawfang's uh, son? I think come back as them. Um, yeah, they fight and, him briefly. Uh, he never died. He though. was an undead though. When yeah. he came and uh, Nefarian came back as well, didn't he? He was at back. least three times. <laughs> we can't you know? get rid of good old Deathwing, Lord Presta. If you talk about if you go into the Warcraft lore, it's actually three times. So yeah, you know, <laughs> it's is there is no doubt about it. Um, well, in my mind, there is no doubt about it. We will be fighting against a corrupted version of Varian at some point. When it doesn't happen, I'll remind you of this podcast and basically you listen to this little sound bit over and over and over. You never it's know. It's fine. It I'll deserve it. <laughs> but yeah, if, so... Sorry. <laughs> if, if it doesn't happen, yeah. then I will admit defeat, but I have not been so sure about something in a very, very long time. I can just imagine the podcast when you're right. <laughs> just be a, a video of Luke, um, Lunar's <laughs> dancing. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, it will be. Yeah, so obviously it ends with uh, Varian dying and he gives a letter to again to give to his son. Obviously then Anduin becomes king. Uh, I won't go into too much detail of the rest of it. Jaina has a hissy fit, that's all you need to know. Yeah, that's, twice, that's, that's the main... Twice the in this main, whole story she has he's two hissy fits. Basically, she's annoyed because she thinks the alliance, the Horde, sorry, left. Fair enough, but then she just teleports off in a huff. And then later on, she teleports in a huff because she doesn't want to let the horde. Yeah, you do a couple talk. of uh, quests with Cadgar. Um, basically, oh, there's also the audio, but not audio, but there's an audio drama, which is like four pieces, the Tomb of Sargeras. That's important um, because you learn then that What's Cadgar and Maeve, uh, Shadow Song, are trying to stop Gul'dan from doing whatever he's doing in Tomb of Sargeras. Obviously, this is when he then breaks the seals. He gets so much power because he's being controlled by Sargeras at the moment. Sargeras in his head. No, he's not. He's being controlled by Kill Jaden. Oh, you, oh, really? are you sure? I'm pretty sure it's I'm Sargeras. I'm very sure it's Kill Jaden. We'll check this out later. Um, either one but of the Kill Jaden's been killed. Oh, but he goes back to the Twisting he's Nether. He's an avatar yeah, okay. anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, you see, and obviously we find out that the Pillars of Creation might be the key to stopping the Burning Legion coming through, I guess. Yeah. Um, to some extent. So that's that's quite important. It's a really well voice acted, and it's a nice, a nice Cadgar voice for you there. Um, but that then leads into the Cadgar storyline we've got at the moment, where we're trying to find out the pillars of creation. We uh, summon Aladai, who was the first mm-hmm. guardian. We see him, uh, his form, sorry, in um, Dalaran. That's right, folks. We have Dalaran back. Dalaran is currently over Karazhan. For the moment, oh, I yes. think they are trying to move it again. Yeah, um, you, you, we leave the quest line yeah, with them trying to move it. Exactly. Uh, they're moving it to the Broken Shores so that Daryl now becomes the new player hub city. Yeah, I miss Daryl I have to admit, I've missed Daryl I miss Daryl so much. Um, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that was the uh, only part of Wrath of the Lich King that I didn't enjoy in uh, Nagaran. The fountain and all the coins you're going to have to fish again. Oh, I want to get. I'm, I'm missing so many coins. Anyway, we digress. So, yeah, so there's a Kaga storyline there. He's trying to find a piece of creation. And what I've been probably mostly doing for the past week, two weeks, invasions. Uh, oh. Very much like the assaults, actually, to an extent, where you fill a bar. Uh, and they're doing stages, though. So you do things like you defend the area. Then you have to defeat a couple of commanders uh, and a lieutenant. You then mm-hmm. have to repel the forces by like closing their gates and that sort of thing, which I actually quite enjoy doing because I kind of snipe them. Um, <laughs> and then you have to, to fight, defeat a demon lord. You get two chests, you get a small legion chest and a large legion chest for this, and they drop fell gear. Uh, my character is currently wearing all fell gear and my legendary ring, pretty much. <laughs> you can then you get nether shards, which you can then spend on. Uh, you get a pet, you get a fell bat, uh, pup, and then you get obviously you can buy. If you don't want to wear the gear, you can still make it look like you're wearing the gear, so you can transmog it. And you get like a trinket, some ring, or other sort of ring, one ring, uh, and a cape, which is cool. So it sort of the brings only, you up to speed. The only thing I will say about the entire thing is that it is that they have achievements for it. They've got the feats of strength yeah. for defeating all of the um, all of the invasions. Now I'm pretty certain that I've done all of the invasions. 
Yeah, yeah I still don't have this achievement. Sorry. And there is no way you to bloody well track it, so I don't know which one I haven't done yet. I'm sure you tracked yours, didn't you? Yes, you can track it, actually. We can edit this bit out if you want, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not bothered either way, it's just a pain in the arse. Um, if you click on someone who's already got the achievement, it'll tell you which one you're missing. Ah, oh, really? mind me next time I'm yeah. on and I'll link you mine. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a good that's idea. idea. <laughs> um, yeah, so... So yeah, invasions are, are quite fun, They've ca- and they've also been a common way for lower level characters to level up. Oh god, yes. Oh, yes. They, they've, they've started the scaling with the invasions as well. We haven't even talked about scaling. No, we'll get to that eventually, but there is now scaling, which we'll delve into a bit more later. But they've scaled them, so uh, Redolt's, what was he, 60 She's something? 63 now. 63 warrior. warrior was with my level 100 druid. And it was scaled so that I was actually fighting a demon that was level 63, while Worth the same demon for Evie elite. was 102 elite. <laughs> so that, that makes it quite a bit more interesting. I don't know how they work it, but we'll get to that later. But yeah, that's basically the bulk of um, the prequest stuff at the moment. They've been sort of filtering it in every so often, so there's mm. been something different to do every few sort of days, I guess. Which, yeah. in a way, slightly makes up for the lack of end content again and having a year of Hellfire And I don't really remember anything apart from going to the Dark Pool for the pre-quest for Ward for Wars of Draenor. Uh, there wasn't much for the pre-quest for Ward of Draenor. Although I have to memorable. admit, they have been doing that quite a bit recently in the last at least three expansions now. And right. when you did do the pre-quest for Laws of Draenor, you couldn't see Cadgar. They had to put another um, vision of Cadgar in the Pandera hub because you couldn't physically click on him because it was so overcrowded. And it's so nice really? that you don't get that with the Legion pre-quest. They have learnt their lessons there. Yeah. Because I couldn't go to the Blasted Lands and just click on Cadgar to start the quest line. I had to go to the Pandera hub, which is fine because I'm always there anyway, um, to then start the quest. Which was weird. But didn't they? They. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, pre. Other pre. Um, events. Uh, Kata. Rack. Cataclysm. Cataclysm was just a sundering, really, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah really Cataclysm was a sundering, which was fun. Up to the shattering. You that, had Wrath, which was where you had the Scourge invasion. The, the Scourge invasion, yes. That's that was. Long, sorry. That was pretty interesting, uh, where everyone was turned into zombies. And oh, BC had oh, that's another thing they're it? doing actually. Oh. With the Legion prequest, they've got a Whispers of the Dark Mind debuff. It's hilarious. Oh, yes, I've heard about you that. That's the one your, where you can make the guards fight each other. You can make play uh, characters um, attackable. So if you've got like, if a adult's down here and I want you to kill him, I can put a debuff on him, and that will then make him attackable. You can just kill and- him. When you get uh, uh, nine stacks of it, you turn into a dreadlord. Yeah, when you when you get nine stacks off, because you start with nine stacks and it decreases all your uh, yeah. attacks. You can't do attacks, but it decreases your damage. But then when you when you're free of your stacks, you can become a dreadlord for one minute before you die, and it's so much fun. Especially, <laughs> I like to hide uh, where the um, training area is in Stormwind. I like to hide in a little house behind it and just sit there and pop it on people. It's fun. <laughs> No, you're yeah. so mean so yeah I think realistically there is an awful lot with the the pre-quest stuff yeah. um, but oh should we get into some of the the stuff yes. that's actually coming yeah. out oh god yes because I I have a bug to bear with no. one of the things that's no. coming out no 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 you are not mentioning it let him let him oh. speak <laughs> so they are releasing artifact weapons oh, oh. yes now the artifact weapons are beautiful. I mean, let's face it. We've got things like we've got Doomhammer, we've got Frostmourne, we've got uh, we've got think, pieces of Frostmourne. We haven't actually got Frostmourne itself. Well, yeah. Um, I think that uh, Thunder Fury was being mentioned as one of them as well, wasn't Ashbringer. it? Oh God, I heard Ashbringer that. <laughs> as well. Now my bug to bear with this <coughs> is that I play a priest. I have played a holy priest since the Burning Crusade. And I love my priest. Uh, so much so that I've got the legendary weapon, Benediction. I think um, because it already exists in the game, maybe that's why. Well, no, so because there's no up. there is no way of getting Benediction anymore. They took the legendary quest line out. So when they were deciding on the artifact weapons for priests, why did they decide to put a bloody staff in called Tura or something like that <laughs> that is handcrafted by the Naru? 
I'm sure it all makes sense because you've got to, you have to do quests to get the artifact weapons that are meant to be in tune with the Class specs. Or... Yeah, for but it. Benediction was the holy staff, and then <laughs> it had a thing where you click on it, it would transform into the shadow version of it. And I'm so sorry, it'd be but they were perfect, really. Then that's they the were... problem. It would have to be for one class, and because it's a uh, sorry, it would have to be for one spec, and because it's technically a multi-spec weapon. Uh, no, I'm I'm sorry. It, they missed out <laughs> on a trick there. If they'd made Benediction the Holy Priest staff, I would have. Well, yeah, I would have had to change my underwear. It, Let's put it that they, way. And if they'd made it the Shadow Priest one, you would have cried your little heart out. Oh, <laughs> I, it just it makes perfect sense with the law. It makes perfect sense with with the settings and the fact you can't get the weapon anymore makes perfect sense. Everything just fits in very, very ni- nicely with but it. But then you get people who get butt hurt because they have been addiction from the first time. They don't and want now they're like, but now everyone can get it. But I, it's my special thing. I'm a special yeah. snowflake because I have this star. Shall we not talk about the war graves of Azanoff then? Well, no, but everyone can have bloody war graves now. If you want to be a demon hunter, no, oh, look at me with my war graves. Blah yeah. blah blah blah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I've got stuff and features that I would like to talk about a couple of things. The transmog system is my first mode. Oh my god, I have never run so many old raids and dungeons just to oh, get even, even I've run some, and I'm not, I don't like running some old raids. I went back and did... Uldua. Oh yeah, <laughs> voluntarily, to, to get some shoulder pads. Shoulder pads? You know what I mean. Um, and some robes, because I wanted a nice robe. For my druids. So I, I deliberately li- went back for this one robe drop. <laughs> I, I won't lie to you. I soloed Old War 25 Man the other day on my Demon Hunter. My brand new shiny Demon Hunter. And the first boss, I had fi- uh, three beacons up. I walked up to him and I just twatted him for about five minutes until he went down. Not in a tank or anything like that. Just bashing yeah, him with my wall we did that. I, I completely forgot about the tanks and I was like Chris uh, uh, sorry Rodolfo are there meant to be this many mobs jumping on me because this is insane <laughs> no it's not so I just it. kept using teleport beast and just running as far as I could and I was like maybe they'll leave me alone eventually and having to like kite the um mm. We, the boss as a druid a balanced druid was interesting <laughs> we, we actually are all the dots um we uh, because uh, Emily was playing an alliance character and I was uh, transmogging run on my horde character. Um, we were actually racing through order against each other. <laughs> and I forgot about was it Thormin, the like lightning giant sort of guy who oh, closes yeah. off the wall and I got stuck. I had my robe at this point, so I was done and I just logged out. I but forgot. I've, I, I've never run it before on my own. I forgot when man. you fight Frey, you need to take out all the things around her first, otherwise she just heals herself so much that you <laughs> can't kill her, even at level 100. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah. yeah, it's made you just go back and do some of the old content, which is nice. And I love customization. Um, and I love the fact that you can save the outfits, and that sounds really, really sad. But I, I really did enjoy that. And you can have the, the weapon enchants as well. No Speak- more sticking mongoose on a weapon just because it looks pretty. And has no use whatsoever, like I did back in Wrath. You still can now. I can have it and it doesn't make me look stupid. I can put a proper enchant on it, but make it look like a mongoose enchant. Speaking about um, changing appearances and customization and whatnot, I'm going to go back to it with the uh, um, artifact weapons. It is an ability... Um, to change the appearance of the weapons. Oh god! So yes. you yeah. you can have a flaming Ashbringer. You can have an Ashbringer that's been I think shattered. You can have the corrupted Ashbringer. You can have either the yeah. Which is a drop, a drop and, in Knight Diablo. Um, the uh, druids can customize the form the form of their shape shifted characters. I am not happy with the Moonkins. Why? They've they've, up, they've upgraded the model, which I like. The general model. They still only yeah. have six. Feathers. A lot more detailed, which is nice. But you just get some crappy armor. Like if you're a feral druid, you get to glow blue. <laughs> I want to glow blue. I mean, at the moment, I have a glyph of stars on, so my I don't actually have a moonkin form. I'm just really, really starry, which is nice. So at the moment, technically, it doesn't affect me. But I would like to, if the moonkin form looked interesting, I'd happily stay mm. uh, in in the moonkin. But uh, yeah. at the moment, I'm kind of. 
disappointed. I, I've been scrolling everywhere, and as far as I can see, you just get some crappy looking armor. And it's different color for Horde, different color for Alliance. That's it. Yeah, pretty much. The same else we touched on earlier, actually, was mm-hmm. scaling and zone scaling now. Yes. yes. I, I'm pleased with that. Although my character at the moment, our max level, is, is it 10 levels? Yes. You get with this one? I like the idea that, like Lunaris was saying in the last podcast, I think, about you do, you level to max level in Draenor and then you're done. Yeah. Mm. In Legion, with the scaling, you can... It doesn't matter. You what? can just quest wherever the hell you want, in what order you want, and just crack on. See, that's that's really good because, I mean, as everyone knows, my favourite place to, to level is in... Outland, <laughs> and you oh know God, can now. Can you go back there with like a one over one hundred? No, character that and... doesn't scale like that. It's only the new yeah, area. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But yeah, I mean, I can, if I want to, I can just sit around and and level in Outland for like into the entire game. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't think it works like I that. I don't think so. I, I hope works it like would. That. That'd be nice, but I think it's only introduced for the new zones. Oh, oh really? Sorry. Yeah. Because they did it with the invasion, but then you can go somewhere else and it's, it's, it's so, normal. Yeah. Sorry to spoil that. However, added with scaling now is also world events. I've not, obviously, I'm guessing they're going to be like events? the invasions. They are going to be exactly like the invasions. They're going to happen randomly and you just go. Really? I did. Yes. I, I won't lie to you, right? When you turned around to me and said that you wanted to do this podcast, I was like, right, I'm going to read the shit out of Legion. Just <laughs> <laughs> watch all the BlizzCon stuff from last year. <laughs> but I didn't know anything about world events. I've not seen anything about that at all. Oh, that's a nice surprise. Well, there you go. See, this podcast is informative. Wow, I learned so something new, and I'm new. actually in the podcast. Um, now, actually, Demon Hunters. There is, there is, there is something else I'm going to speak about. We're not going to speak about Demon Hunters just yet. But I know Lunas is going to lose his shit in a minute now, but... Karazhan. Oh, oh God, Karazhan! Yes. How did I forget about that? The only thing I gave a crap about that was announced at Gamescom. Oh, yeah, <laughs> this, this, year. this year's Gamescom had a lot of good things in it, as far as I'm concerned, because I play a lot of Overwatch as well. But oh, yeah, talk about me. <laughs> oh my God, the first patch for this expansion a massive is Karazhan. Karazhan dungeon. It's going to be a nine-boss dungeon, something they've never oh. done before. Seriously, I cannot tell you how excited I am. And also, I uh, I have... Karazhan is my favourite raid. Of all time, Karazhan is my favourite raid. I have done everything with Karazhan that I can. I have even gone into the crypts. I've glitched myself into the crypts before. And you I thought in to, there now. Yeah, well, this is it. This, I, thought, this, to my, I yeah. thought to myself the other day when I was in Karazhan doing the quest line, I thought... I'm gonna go and see what they've whether they've done anything to the crypt, and you can actually get into them. Sure, yeah. they've they've only let you in one more room, but I was so excited. That's a excited. whole other room that you didn't get in before. Exactly. And have you seen what artifacts are in there? All the artifacts from the previous expansions are all mm. in there. Yeah, this know. is what I'm saying. The entire thing is being opened up, and I have I. <sighs> I'm like a school kid. I am like a school kid that has been told, here you go, there's a £50 note, go to the sweet shop and just gorge yourself. Buy all the raid bosses. Oh, I, I cannot I'd just like tell to point you. out, first of all, I was, after they announced Karazhan, I was excited to see it now. I know this come before. Hearthstone Karazhan story mode, amazing. It just looks amazing. <laughs> mm. I've played a little bit of it, it's good. But more importantly, with Karazhan, do we reckon this raid is going to not go up the tower... But down and underneath the tower, and bring it in line with the last guardian. Yes, that'd be cool. Yes, I do think so. I'm going to put my neck out like you have. You're going to George four minute as well. I'm going to George four minute. This is adult, and I endorse this sentence. Actually, you know what? I would go as far as to say I think that we are going to have two raids in Karazhan. I think they're going to revamp the original Karazhan raid into something new, and I think that we're going to have a second Karazhan raid which goes down into the crypts. Yes. Mm, it depends how much it's linked to the Feds of Creation. So obviously in the prequest, we've just gone there purely to get a book. Yes. Yeah. So it would be interesting to see how it ties into the Feds of Creation. I wouldn't be surprised um, because we don't know much about the Pillars of Creation, do we? We know for a fact there is one on the Broken Isles. I but, think that the idea was that's where Aladai's research uh, led him. Actually, I'd just like to point out there are five zones to level in and there are five pillars. Oh my god, that didn't even occur to me. Well done. 
Did you just think of that on the fly? No, I read that in a blizzard log somewhere. <laughs> that's cheating. But yeah, no, that's a very good point, actually. I don't so. know. We shall see. Um, yeah. Um, more I mean, it, it could on. fit. But, I think uh, there's definitely one in Suramar. I reckon the Nightwell in Suramar. Yes, I've I've definitely I've read something it. about uh, about that. Where did I re- I can't remember what I read. Something about um, the <coughs> Nightwell was built over a pillar of creation to protect it or something like that. Yeah, the, I don't the know. Nightwell um, they have a barrier around yeah. their city because the Burning Legion's been trying to get to the Nightwell, mm. so that might be why. Um, but I mean, obviously, we've seen the Burning Legion attacking. Uh, Karazhan, so it wouldn't surprise me if there was one there as well. Mm, or something but, to I mean, bind them, perhaps. Or we to know, make use of them. We know that there are five pyra- yeah. pillars of creation, don't we? Yeah. Um, but I'm going to... This might be a bit off the cuff here. I don't know whether anyone's suggested it or not, but uh, we also know that there are five old gods as well. Uh, we've already defeated at least two... Yeah, uh, <laughs> one in one in Old War and one in AQ. I know. Well, we do have the whole storyline. Obviously, what the, the the dude in Old War said about Azeroth being a Titan and how mm. it's bigger than the Burning Legion. Which actually, when we get into the uh, the predictions, I do have a prediction. I do, I do like that comes to do with that as well. Uh, so. as, as, uh, my 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 thought is, I wonder whether we are going to see another Old God. During this expansion, mm, possibly we might because... be. Uh, anything else we're excited about? We want to talk about? Um, uh, other than Demon Hunters wrecking the DPS oh, charts at the moment. God, <laughs> yes, they are wrecking them. I have worked so hard on my rotations, and now I'm just getting thrashed. I won't <laughs> lie to you, right? I have, I, I, as I said, I've done a lot of research before we decided to do this. I've got notes in front of me here. And under my notes, I've got Demon Hunter. And the first point underneath Demon Hunters, it says, underlined in capitals, fucking boss. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) Well, they are meant to be a hero class, aren't they? Like the Death Knight. Yeah, that's exactly what they're meant to be like. So it kind of makes sense that they would be very powerful. And the idea is they are meant to be more powerful than the Denzians of Azeroth. Mm. The natural Denzians, I would say. Because obviously they're technically enhanced. I guess but the then, they are meant to be more powerful. Just grr. But then, <laughs> death Death Knights are not overpowered anymore. They are very yeah. They did balance them as time. They're well, very very well balanced. Would happen now. in the storyline, I guess, wouldn't it? Really, the, the the Lich King isn't an active presence anymore. Therefore, exactly. they they would weaken it. Does make some sense, which I really yeah, like. Yeah, I feel come at the end of Legion, they'll then balance out Demon Hunters. Demon Hunters will be the class well, to play. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to be a case of we're going to see the end of Legion uh, of the Legion. I don't think that uh, the Burning Legion will disappear after this, this expansion because haven't Blizzard come out and said that they've got enough content for at least another thirty odd expansion packs? Can, I, can really? I do the thing? Um, no, can you can, I do the that thing? Waits, that waits. That's <laughs> prediction. That that, got, that that links into my prediction as well. Oh, does cool. it? Yes. Yeah. Right. Oh. So, is there anything we're not looking forward to? Demon hunters recommend the DPS charts. <laughs> as anything I say, that's not personal. Not having my pet because I've I've been playing Beast Mastery uh, for the past two expansions, maybe three. Um, because I love my pets and I love having my exotic pets. Even though I usually just use a night saber, um, in my big. But with the new lead and stuff, it's made my druid better. She is absolutely so much fun to play. The whole six buttons I press. But my hunter got a nightmare. My bar was chock a block, and it just it was so many buttons and cooldowns and. Trying to cut my pet was doing it just uh, it was just too much and I was like I'll give Mark Mitchell a go I'll see how it goes uh, obviously the the most beneficial talent the tier first tier one talent you take is Lone Wolf which means you get 18 percent extra damage but you can't have a pet out and unfortunately Ooh. my DPS is so much better for it which is horrible because I, I I miss Bink but. Markmanship is better, and I admit I do get the the, the uh, wind I'm, bow. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks of Cataclysm and when they moved the pet button. Uh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I realised I couldn't call Bink, and I thought he'd been deleted, and I cried. <laughs> she threatened to quit the game and everything. But I can, as from I can change specs 
Um, and I can take the talent off. If That's I want something to. else actually they've introduced. Is yeah, you, you can, can be all three specs there. You do not need to learn a second. I spec want a refund it. for my dual spec. Yes, I would too. <laughs> Too bloody wrong. All those years ago, I paid for that jewel spec so I could catch pretty beasts. Two hundred gold. It was a rip off. Oh, uh, well, it's not just that though. I mean, there's there's things like uh, all, all of the gold. I brought. All of the gold that I ever spent on on you know, I mean. <clears throat> all ammunition. The, ammunition. Yes, I was going to yeah. say ammo, but then I had a cough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the gold that I spent on ammo, all of the gold that I spent on learning spells, all of the gold oh, that I spent God. on. Yeah, I forgot about that. Wow. All the gold I mean, that I spent on on respecking or on um, resetting my talents. Mind. Or yeah, oh, it's just yeah. there's so much. You can now so change much... your talents as long as you're in a city or well rested, I believe. Yeah, if you can I... change your talents. If and I went, 30 seconds into the dungeon, apparently. Mm. If if I went into, you know, how much gold I have wasted in my time yeah. playing this game. Yeah, probably a couple of vial of sands. Well, actually, no, I was thinking more along the lines of I probably wouldn't have had to buy gold from that seller that one time. <laughs> we <We're already laughs> speak of that. <laughs> now, now, Blizzard could be listening. <laughs> oh, also, speaking of specs, actually, and obviously being able to... Um, change within 30 seconds of getting into a dungeon. I believe there's now going to be an automatic feature. Whereas if you queue as a healer, but you are, for example, in DPS in, spec, yeah, they then you ch- transport into the dungeon and you are then in your healer spec. Oh, really? Woo! Yeah, which is brilliant for people like Redolt who forgets to change spec into either halfway through the dungeon. <laughs> I wonder why I only had one healing spell through the whole thing. It's like when they got oh. rid of the fishing pile, that made me happy because the amount of times I went around as a Hunter, when you could have a stat stick instead of um, as well as a bow. I the amount of times mm. I went in with my fishing rod on my back. <laughs> oh yes, there were many. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's one thing. There's not anything that I am not looking forward to in Legion, but there's one thing that I am apprehensive about. Mm. Go on then. I am apprehensive about the class halls. Aren't we all? I really hope they're not retexting garrison. <laughs> right, well, this is it. I mean, we know for a fact that it is going to be a place for different factions to no, congregate for their classes. classes. And no, 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 no. You can the, speak to uh, yeah. uh, other factions. Ooh. It's it's same class cross faction. So my priest can be in the same area as a pre uh, an alliance priest yeah but isn't that what they did with darylan and shatter for that matter no you couldn't communicate you were in the same place oh can you actually communicate, communicate? well this is it i mean aware. there's 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 things saying that you can there's things that are saying you can't but uh, i mean as i say well, i soon, i don't like the idea of having a instance area i mean yes okay it's not going to be a solo instance like um, like garrisons are at the moment but, but then are they also going to be overcrowded? Because I'm guessing they're not going to be that big. At least exactly. from like Ironforge or Stormwind or Org uh, or the Panda um, mm. Pandera places. There's a lot more room. You can like do a lot the more Maelstrom. stuff. Yeah, at least you're not I both. Don't both don't get the, the sewers. I would rather the sewers than the Maelstrom. Where well, this goes? is it. There's a few places that we know for a fact are going to be the class halls. Like, we know for a fact that the Death Knights are going to have Ebb and Hold. Yep. We know for a fact that Shammies are going to have the Maelstrom. The Maelstrom. Yeah. But where the hell are Hunters going to go? They, We've got a lodge. We've got a special got a lodge. lodge. We fire on a giant bird whenever I mean, we want to a, to a pretty lodge where the Reese of Windrunner will be. I mean, there, there are places that, that fit in nicely. Like I say, um... The rogues, they've got... The sewers um, of Dalaran. Yeah, that that <laughs> doesn't make much sense to me, because the rogues, in the old gameplay, they had a, um, like a castle or fort in Hillsbrad, where they learned their poison training for the first time. That would be perfect as a in, class in, hall. In my head, the, the thing in the sewers looks to me like the Thieves' Guild in Skyrim. Yes. That's how I imagine that. But yes, a definitely. Bit but that's, um, that's the only but, way I can get through the fact that they... they, they I think, think the, the reason is. also they've not been put in Hillsbred because there's another class in Hillsbred. Is there? The mages are getting the Daryland Crater. Are they? Yes. What? Poop oh, well, that's, that's, not, that's not a bad shout, actually. That's, that's, quite, that's quite... Yeah, that fits nicely. But, again, I know I'm like a broken record saying it over and over again because I'm a priest... Priest. 
priest. Where? Yeah, exactly. Where the fuck are priests gonna go? I could because... tell you if I had enough time. I get, if you look online, I would, you will find find out. I don't play priest or outward priest, so I've not looked. Well, I mean, I think is it still in cathedral? No, of course, still all in cathedral. Of, all it's of a cathedral, s- something though. Yeah. All of a sudden, I just want to do who's the taint because you said priest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, as, as I say, there's a few bits I haven't looked into because I kind of want to keep a little bit of a secret, but. Yeah. Uh, you know, as I say, I don't like. I, I'm I'm apprehensive about the uh, the class walls because I don't want it to turn into another garrison. I don't and mind f- if, it, if it's an option to do that sort of thing, but I really don't want to be mandatory. I I'm pretty certain that it is going to be mandatory yeah. because um, oh, from yes. what I've read, you have to go back to your class halls to level up your artifact weapon. Yes. Yeah, you that do. that makes sense though. I guess. With that. But uh, that that's another thing, actually, because from what I've read, the artifact weapon is something you start off Legion with, and it's the th- it's going to be the weapon that you end Legion with. So does that mean there's not going to be any better weapons than your artifact no. we- weapon? Basically, as far as I can tell, yeah. You uh, instead of weapon drops, you get our um, uh, artifact power ups. Right. Uh, instead, they drop and they do different things. It looks like you've got like a almost like a. Um, Again, I hate to talk about Skyrim again, but like the talent system in Skyrim, yeah. where it's like a shape of the weapon, and you can use the different branches, but I think so, you can fill all the branches. So it's just another level of mid-maxing then, because yeah. they, yeah. they got rid of the um, the the Path of the Titans, didn't they, in... Oh, what was that in? Was that Warlords of Draenor? Or was that I, Cataclysm? I don't actually remember that, so that I can't, might be. I can't remember Something which one I it was. Something I missed out on. But, <laughs> but the path, path of the Titans was a form of mid-maxing. It was a case of, um, you know, you pick certain things and, and your character either becomes more powerful uh, or the gets old a new ability or X, Y, and Z. And yeah. Blizzard were like, actually, no, we're going to take it out because it's mid-maxing <laughs> and we don't want everyone to... Uh, to end up with the same build again we don't want people to have the same talent trees so they took it all out but now they're doing this with the weapons I can't see any way that they can make each one of the runes or whatever it is they've done it in such a way that eventually if you do all the content you can actually get every single one Right, okay. That's so, how they're getting around well, it. you can get it by doing different things. You can do it by doing dungeons. Yeah, that's the other thing. Dating. You can get it however you want. Yeah, there's a different that's ways interesting. to get it. Which place, I don't know if it'll be, you have to do this to get this. Like, you have to do a PvP Which... match to get one thing, for example. Yeah, we'll Speaking about PvP, out. there's something that we've completely missed on. That's because I, I don't PvP at all, that's so I'm I terrible. Don't PvP. <laughs> None of us PvP. We are all PvEers. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, yep. there, there's no question about it we all prefer to do pve but pvp is getting a very big update in this um this expansion it's that not we've getting not touched it. it's on. already got it oh has it already got it, it oh is. well <laughs> pvp yes. talents oh yes and not only that but pvp gear is a thing of the past mm. it's swatch swoops isn't it now yeah seriously pvp talents might even be enough to bring me back into trying, uh, well, playing PvP again. I played it for a bit in the Tolbrath. Yep. Yeah. I think, and that was kind of it, unfortunately. For Apparently, me. I enjoyed the Tolbrath. Between stuff, someone who has an item level of seven hundred and someone who has an item level of eight hundred, mm. instead of it being an instant kill like it would be in a PvP zone, apparently that character now only has about a five percent advantage. Oh really? Making Which it means it makes it even, and it's down to skill now. Oh, Good. Dear. <laughs> I'm definitely, definitely not going to do that then. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think PvP talents is, is nice because it's it's separated it all out. Instead of having the PvP talents uh, or the quite obvious PvP talents in your normal talent tree, it's like right now you've got a chance to just spec your your talents as you want them. And have your separate ones for your PvP at the same time. Mm. Although I will say this, right? Again, as a holy p- or as a priest, oh, where the hell has my talent for Halo gone? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you, I can't cast and heal or cast and attack anymore. So don't Seri- you talk to me about spells. Seriously, Halo. Halo was the most badass-looking spell in the world ever. It's like, yeah, I'm just going to sit my priest right here and I'm going to put out a ring of, of 
positive energy or negative energy or whatever and it looks badass um you know i'm sorry that is that is a thing yeah and i want it back so yeah I you are think, now a priest of salt yes you are a salty priest i am a salty priest story. um right so uh we quickly touched on the last bit here but um predictions for the end of the game Predic- predictions well, for the, the end expansion um theories anything like that i mean there are quite a few going around there fan thrown out ones there that medivh's going to come back jane is a dreadlord that jane is a dreadlord and Cadgar's died in Faramore. A Cadgar's a dreadlord because of the <laughs> storyline in or he's even the host of sargeras because of the storyline in the last guardian mm. you've got all kinds of theories coming out so I think personally, or there's even one about Anduin being a bloody um, dreadlord. No, so no, I've no, heard no, about the that. The Anduin one is amazing. That's well, my that's the one. other Anduin one. Um, <laughs> but my favourite would have to be that Jaina is a dreadlord for the simple reason I hate who she has become. I really, really, mm. really hate who she's. She become. has had an abrupt change. And I would really hope that it's because of the Burning Legion. I yeah. would like it to be that reason. I'd like it to be that um, Jaina died in Feramore and that this is just uh, someone using her avatar. Yeah, that would make sense. I don't know. I don't have much in the way of predictions for the storyline. The only thing that I will say is that we are not going to defeat the Legion in this expansion. I'll let, I agree. Uh, Evie bring into this one because of her favourite fan My favourite theory. theory I've heard and I, I'm going to George Foreman this one. Um, basically, in the fourth comic, the Anduin comic for Legion, um, you a, a demon attacks Anduin. Right. He kicks the demon's butt. Um, some nice paladin undertones there, which I'm going yeah, to. He seems to have. He has a, a hammer. hammer. So I wonder if he's going to go from priest to paladin now. But um, at the end, there is a bit that says, "Many, many years later, it has him uh, being called the High King Anduin Win." Uh, a proper villain, and they are on the Exodor. Uh, and here's like a little throne in the Exodor. So that's, I'm assuming, in the space. Dark space, beyond. Space. Dark um, beyond. And it's, Velen says something akin to the light. Light shall prevail over the, the shadows. shadows. Now, if you know your law. Wait. No, I will go to that in a minute. But the, the, the real kicker, Anduin, is like super old. Super, super old really? in this. Yeah. yeah. He's like got white hair, a couple of scars. Now, there are a couple of theories around this. Um, if you know your law very, very well. You will know that shadow also means void, as in the Void Lords. Who yeah. are the big, big bads, the reason the Burning Legion kind of exists. The reason that Sargeras is going around destroying the worlds because he wants to stop them. Right idea, wrong way about it. But yeah, so the idea being... They're, oh, sorry, the theory being that they're then going to go up against the Shadow Lords, uh, the Void Lords, sorry. Mm. Possibly. On the Exodor, which is a functioning ship. Yeah, but it may, it may be that it's fully operational, or by this point, fully operational. And the other theory is that the Burning Legion are fighting side by side with us. That perhaps maybe we defeat Sargeras, Illidan then becomes the leader of the Burning Legion, and then we go to defeat the Void, Void Lords. Lords. Possibly. Holy shit! So we turn from a high fantasy game into a full-on bloody sci-fi. Space game. opera. <laughs> I'd like to point out it's the dark beyond. Metson would kill you if you did say anything else. Space. But um, yeah, that's one of the, my absolute favourite theories that I've heard so far. I lost my shit when I saw the end of the comic. And I was like, what? I did, I went back and read nice. it about four times. I was like. I mean, it means that Anduin and Velen will now um, both survive Legion. And the Elk Cellar. Do not forget yeah. the Elk Cellar. <laughs> the <laughs> Elk Cellars, and you can see him in the background with his little eye patch. Um, but yeah, that made me, I was like, oh my god. Because in the Illidan, and this is a really important part for me of the Illidan uh, book beforehand, was that um, the Naru, one of the, the oldest Naru, <coughs> visits Illidan while he's setting up the portal to Argus or researching into it um to Sargeras into Argus sorry um he sees Sargeras there um and the Naru gives him a vision that will come to pass of himself with a halo there's where your spell went Luke 
Um, mm. Leading an army using the light. So I don't know if maybe that's to do with that at all. I mean, mm. the idea of Illidan... I mean, I want a redemption story for Illidan, but I can't imagine him being a warrior of the light. No. No, not anymore. No, but that was he, to be the fair, vision he was given. He had the little Naru symbol appear above his head. Uh, he saw that, and he saw that before he died, or in qu- air quotes, died. To be fair, he um, was never really one for the light. He was a bit for himself most of the time. Well, yeah. Um, so, has anyone else got anything to add, or are oh, we done? I want to go do some invasions. I, 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 I feel the need for more nether shards. You can go raid at 11 o'clock at night. Yep. I'm going to go to bed as I have work at 6. I'm in preparation for the launch, technically tomorrow here, at 11pm. <laughs> oh, God. I need to be ready. Lunas, do you have anything else to add? I will say one thing and one thing only. Do you say priest again? I will come over there and back you around no, the head with your microphone. No, no, no. I will not mention priests one more time in this entire thing. What are you going to say? I am Dunyan rings with Warlords of Draenor. Yes, yes, I think we again, all are. Yeah, I completely agree. I'm over it now. I'm <laughs> fully ready for Legion. Oh, yes. yes. I think we all are. Right. Okay, well, I've been Redult. I've been Evie. I'm going to go log on now. <laughs> And I've been Lunarus. Uh, check out these guys' channels, guys. And obviously, like and subscribe the video if you like it. If you don't, well, you know Perhaps, where you can go. Unfortunately, we're still <laughs> going to make them. Too right. Oh, yes. Have fun, guys. See you later. Bye.